This week on Digging Deeper, I want to talk about the number one thing that defines market gardening, the backbone of the cropping system that I've been using for all these years. We're talking about permanent raised beds and why they're so important. So market gardening is really different from small scale, you know, row vegetable farming in many ways. First of all, we don't use tractors. We're not, all the whole system is not based on tractor implements, plows, discs, all of these tools that are most common in vegetable production, even organic, and all the cultivating tools that are tractor based. In market gardening, we've brought all of this down to tools that are sized for smaller plots. And the number one reason why we can get around not having a tractor and relying more on a two-wheel tractor is because we work on permanent beds systems. Okay, so the beds don't need to be uh, disc hill shaped every, every time. Uh, we made them once uh, and then we're just cultivating the surface of the bed using different tools. So really, that's really the cornerstone of everything that we do because the size of the bed, the width, will define all the tools that we use for the beds. And so, it's a system, it's a unit that is multiplied and obviously the bed is the growing area, there's the walkway. Uh, our beds are 30 inch wide, our pathways are 18 inch wide. 18 inch is really ideal for wheelbarrows, for, for harvesting on your knees, for crates, for all of that. But 30 inch is really awesome also because all the tools that we use are standardized to do the work in one pass, so they're 30 inch wide or in two pass. So the number one reason why permanent beds are so important in market gardening is that they're the main reason, the fact that they're permanent, that we can go around without relying on tractors to do heavy field work. The second reason why permanent raised beds is that the fact that they're raised. And not all market gardeners raise the, their beds and that really could depend the usefulness of it if you're in a you're in really, really hot climate. But in most places and throughout my whole, you know, research on market gardening throughout the centuries, beds are always raised. And there's a lot of good reasons why you want to do that. And the first one is really to have just a higher surface of soil that's not compacted at all. So by raising it just a little bit, it just gives you more depth to the soil, more fluffiness. And that makes a big difference, especially if you're close spacing some plants. So it has just kind of a more of a, of a growing area that's not compacted at all. And it also helps a lot if ever you have flash floods. So flash floods, depending on where you are, they're pretty common or when they happen, it's an event, but that's a lot of rain coming down at once. And if the beds are not raised, you know, the whole topsoil can be really quickly washed away. And that could be years of amendments and of just kind of taking care of soil that gets washed away. And so that's one good reason why you want to raise them. It could be just a little bit, but at least the water will go and percolate through the rows and not just wash off the topsoil. That's the reason why the Cubans have those cement raised beds is exactly for that. When there's a tornado, a flash flood, that's what happens. So that's kind of reason number two. The third reason, and that's another really important one, is that we're putting the amendments, compost, whatever, in exactly where the growing area is. And so we're not just kind of spreading amendments all over or, you know, like a, a manure spreader would do. And then you're putting a lot of compost in the aisles and wherever. We're concentrating the amendments in the growing area onto the bed. And that rationalizes the amendments, the compost that we use on the farm, which is a big expense. All right, so the other reason why perma beds, and that really has to do with spatial design and ergonomics of how things are set up on the farm. The bed becomes a unit of measure on the farm. They're standardized in width, but also in length. So all of our beds here are 100 or 50 foot or whatever, but they're all the same length. And then it's easier 
to not only calculate, um, you know, let's say the compost that you need to put into your fields gets broken down to, you know, it's four or five wheelbarrows per bed. And that's a lot easier to, to calculate and establish than let's say, you know, 50 tons per acre, which doesn't really equate to anything. And so the fact that the fields are broken up in smaller units that are all standardized in length, the material becomes more vers versatile. May it be drip tapes, may it be row covers, insect nets. They're all made to function with that unit, which is the bed. And then depending on the, the width of your, of your insect nets, you might have nets that are for four, five or six beds. So it's, it's really a unit of measure to organize everything, spatial layout also. That makes a big difference. So it works out in the end that the ergonomics of the design of the farm is really orchestrated around this concept of permanent beds. So number five, and, and that's not typical to just like 30 inch beds, but the beds make it, the beds are human scale. You know, they're, they're made for arm reach. Like when I'm bending over at the middle of the bed, you know, I'm not far. Uh, I can hop over the bed, you know. I can use my tools at an arm reach to do the work that I need. And that's really different from row cultivation or other systems uh, or other setups. But the fact that the beds is where everything's happening and that I'm compacting only the aisles. I'm never compacting the bed. Uh, really makes it that I'm not stepping into them, you know? And so they're made for human specs, if you want. And I've always thought that that's a big part of everything we do here at the farm. It's human scale farming and it's designed for humans, not for tractors and all the implements that goes on tractor. Not to say the tractors are not good, but you know, what I've been saying for, you know, long time is that even if you're not heavily mechanized or not mechanized at all, you can still really be productive and effective and efficient in market gardening, namely because we're working on permanent raised beds. So these are the reasons and I know a lot of people have adopted these, these specs for the beds over the, the last 15 plus years and perhaps on another talk I'll talk about why 30 inch and some of the history behind that but definitely they're all standardized with tools that we use. So it's a great system and that's the one that I have. <laughs>